Hey everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 22 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. Don't forget to like the video. Frosty. Also frosty. Beautiful morning. Duh. You know, once you get out in the field, you can oil them chains. Greased up, fueled up, ready to rock and roll. Be ready. Right on the line, which being real cold out, once it warms up a little bit, it's going to be just fine. Check the water. Last night, one of Cooper's friends was running this cart, and I don't know if he didn't have the tractor revved up high enough or what, but the auger ended up plugging up. That's a pretty lengthy auger, so there's a lot of corn in there. So what you gotta do to unplug it is there's a trap door at the bottom of the auger that you open up, and it leaves like a five bushel pile of corn. I don't want a five bushel pile of corn in my field. So we're gonna drive this over to the main farm, and we're just gonna pull it over to the pit, open it up there, and then we'll just unload it the same way we'd unload a semi. I'm a semi driver today. Yep, just your average semi-driver. Nothing unusual here. I mean, that can easily happen. I pumped it a little bit there. And it is hard to, you know, see the truck. If you don't get over a halfway decent, it's hard to get it. So, you know, the front one don't want to run. That's good to get that out of there, I guess. Like I said, just your average everyday semi-driver. Doesn't get much better than this Iowa view. Come on, Dad! We got about 65 acres left on this farm, and then we got about 90 acres down the road, and then we got a three acre field, and then we will be done. We should be able to get this field whacked off today easily. Should be able to get the three acre field whacked off easily, and then should be able to get the other field opened up so that tomorrow we can really stretch our legs and get it whacked off. This is our hilliest farm that we have, and there's no good place to pull a semi into off the road. So when it comes to loading, we have the semi sitting all the way on top of that hill over there, so we have to drive way down there, get on the road, unload on the semi, then the field right across the road that's beans over there is also ours, so we turn around in that and then we make our way back over here. That's why two grain carts is extremely handy because a lot of times the combine will be full and you can still see the grain cart that's full of corn still going up the hill and hasn't even dumped yet. So when the other cart's here, then the combine never has to stop. Let's see how good of a job the combine's doing. I'm looking for corn here, and I'm looking for corn here. We're not seeing much at all. We're gonna get a little bit, but that's kind of inevitable. Another thing I look at is ears like this. This means that when it went through the rotor, all the corn didn't get knocked off. 
I'm gonna look around a little bit more because if they're all empty like this, then we're okay. Otherwise, we need to tighten our concaves a little bit. Tightening the concaves just makes a smaller space around the rotor. Therefore, it knocks more stuff off of the cob. If your concaves are too tight, it'll just shred this up into little pieces. If you go into a cornfield and you see like little inch long chunks, that's what's going on there. So far, all these seem to be pretty good, so I think we're okay. And as we can see, we got some nice and small residue here on the ground. Our comber choppers are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Just look at those tiny little pieces of corn stock. Lunch time. Uh, we didn't have pizza, we had turkey sandwiches and potato salad with chips and apples. Nice and warm in my cab right now. I'm tired. I could definitely fall asleep. We're gonna let them play in there and have fun in the dust for a little while. On this particular combine, once the engine gets below a certain RPM, a beeper goes off and it goes beep. It's super obnoxious. And when it doesn't get above 2,350 RPMs, it keeps going off. And right now it's dipping under that. Basically, if you're crawling along, it's still doing it. So we think the rotor is plugged, kind of. So Cooper is dealing with that right now. He's trying to unplug some of that trash that's plugging up some of the gaps for the grain to fall through. If that's not it, we're gonna try changing fuel filters. The air filter should be clean, but that is also a possibility. And if that doesn't work, well, I guess then we just have a good problem because our corn is yielding so well that it just takes a lot of power to go through and we have to go slow. But Cooper took those shields off and it does look like it's plugged up pretty good around that rotor. So he's in there with the screwdriver right now, filling his eyes full of dust and stuff. So we'll let him do that for a while. Better him than me. So inside this cage here, that's the rotor. So when corn makes its way up the head into here, it goes up through the throat into the rotor. Once it's in the rotor, which is inside of here, there's a gap. And inside there, it spins around really fast. And these teeth things hit the corn and it knocks the kernels right off. And then it falls through these holes. And there's an auger system here that brings it to the back. And in here is what's in here. This is the sieves. So then the trash and stuff goes along here corn falls into these gaps and then the trash gets blown out the back and the corn gets brought up into the tank. Pretty simple machine actually, just a lot of moving parts. We cleaned up what we could and it's a lot better in there but still some trash. You can only get to half of the rotor by taking those guards off because the other side's got a bunch of chains and stuff in the way. Luke came to the rescue. He brought a new fuel filter. Cooper's going to change it quick. And hopefully this will solve the power issue. I know all you John Deere guys are going to be like, oh, it's okay, so that's why. No, go ahead, have your fun. Better work. Is that straight howls? No. I hope not. That's what your dad gave me. Got her fixed. Some days Cooper runs the combine, some days I run the combine. If we have a passenger who we want to ride with us in the combine, then the respective person who has the passenger runs the combine in most cases because the green cart is a lot tighter. We just have this as a buddy seat in here. First in the combine, there's an actual buddy seat. And we also like to kind of have a fair share in who gets time in the combine because the combine is the most fun piece of equipment to run. 
dad doesn't get any fun because he's stuck at the bend site and that is the least fun job but someone has to do it and he's the oldest and most experienced so he gets dubbed with that one <laughs> sorry dad in the grain cart or the combine or just in a field in general I'm always looking for things that I can do to improve a farm or to improve our overall operation so I'm going to show you a couple things that I'm thinking here right now in this field so back in the day this field used to be like three different fields so up on the horizon there there's one then down in this valley and then the one we're at right now so there was fences in between them and over time with mold bore plowing and stuff that they used to do back in the day there became different elevations in the different fields. So along these fence lines, there might be a three, four foot drop in spots. And to me, that's incredibly inefficient because when we plant it, it's kind of like having three different fields. So we have to have three different sets of end rows. And then so when we're opening it up with the combine, we have to get all these end rows off and end rows are just slow. You can't go back and forth. That ridge right there along the horizon, I want to smooth that out and I want to smooth this one out that's right in front of us. I want to pull all these trees and stuff. And then that way we'll just basically have one big field when it comes to this instead of three individual sections. So then we just have one set of end rows we have to take off. We'll be able to harvest a lot more efficiently. We'll be able to have half mile rows the entire time. In some spots we have mile rows here. The less you have to turn around, the more efficient you are being with the combine, the more you can get done, and it's just a lot smoother going in general. When it comes to actual farming practices, we did something completely new on this field this year. Here on Corn Star Farms, we do a lot of corn on corn rotation, but we've always done disking in the fall time, then we disk it again in the spring, and then we hit it with the field cultivator. So we go over all of our ground three times. Our big four-wheel drive tractors burn 10 gallons of diesel fuel an hour, and we can do about 20 acres an hour let alone what we're paying someone to drive the tractor and then the wear and tear on the tractor and just the time in general that it takes. It was extremely expensive, labor intensive, and time consuming. So that's where this field comes into play. Last spring was incredibly wet, so we couldn't get in here to work this up at all. Therefore, we had to do no-till corn on corn. We've done no-till into beans for years. We'll plant corn into just straight bean stalks, no issue whatsoever, and it works wonderfully. But we've never done it with corn before. But we didn't really have a choice this past spring, so we did it. And this field right now is yielding 225 bushels an acre, and this is definitely not top quality ground by any means. I really, really like this farm though. It's an underdog farm. It always produces well. Even though on paper it really shouldn't. It's hilly, it's got a lot of valleys, it's got a lot of wet spots. And like I said, it's not rated as the top ground from around here. Being able to run no-till, corn on corn, we are able to save so much tillage expense. We figured tillage expense to be around $20 an acre. Doesn't sound like that much over one acre, but we take that over 2,000 acres, that's $40,000 a year. That's a lot of money. So this was definitely a good test for us. It wasn't something that we tried to do intentionally. It's just the weather kind of forced us into it. And so far, it seems to be paying off extremely well. We installed some new devices on our corn head this year that are gonna help us with residue management. That's why we installed the calmer choppers. It's gonna break our residue down into smaller pieces. We figure smaller residue is a lot easier to break down and larger residue. And then we also put the stock stompers on our corn head. Right now we are on a row and it lays it flat down on the ground. And when this stuff is in contact with the soil, it's gonna get those microbes in the soil working and decomposing this a lot better. And then during the springtime when we're putting down our 32% nitrogen on our first rate, we're gonna be putting in some different additives into that that are also going to help decompose some of this stuff. There's a lot of organic matter here in this residue that's on the ground. There's a lot of nutrients. And so we want that back in the soil, not just sitting on top. We don't know what repetitive no-till corn on corn on corn on corn is going to do. If the residue is going to be building up over time, that's something we're going to need to keep an eye on. If maybe once every three years we need to run through here with our vertical tillage system just for management of the residue purposes, that might be something we have to do. This is completely new to us and we're learning as we go, but we're always wanting to be taking that step forward Instead of backwards, we had a sword pointed in our back and we walked out on the plank and we jumped and it seems to be working so far. Last year we didn't have the stompers on our corn head and we didn't have the calmer choppers. 
As you can see, this is an old corn stalk from last year, and it hasn't broken down yet. But this bad boy's been sticking straight up all year, so it hasn't been down on the soil. But just for comparison, this is what an OEM snapping roller does to a corn stalk. As you can see, this one is a year old, and it's still strong and in relatively good condition. Now let's look what the combination of a stock stomper and the calmer chopper did. Look at that, how that's so tore apart. It's just tattered up. They're all like that. If they didn't get knocked down flat on the ground, they're all tore up. Some are knocked down like this. They had a weaker stock to it, so that one right there is disintegrated. And these ones are standing, but they're tattered. That's what we want. We want these bad boys to break down as much as possible because we want these nutrients to go back into the soil and we want this to break down so that way when we plant our seed, we're not basically making a big old blanket over the seed so that sunlight and stuff can't get to it because then we won't get even seed emergence. We'll have some seeds that won't come up and when you're not having the population that you want, you're losing yield. If we set for a population of 35,000 plants per acre and only 29,000 plants come up, first off, we're spending a lot more money on seed than we need to be. And secondly, we're losing yield because we're having less of a population than what we were intending. And our ground can handle relatively high populations around here. And we upped our population this year and we saw a really, really good yield boost from that. So those are all things we just want to keep an eye on. And we want to make sure we're doing as good a job as possible on getting all of our ducks in line and trying to do everything that we plan to do. Okay, let's get in the tractor, it's cold out. These cookies are really calling my name. Star. Give that to Parker. You're watching Call the Corn Star, baby! <laughs> Bye, Parker. Good news, guys. We got two fields left. We just got done with this one. This was our biggest field, 320 acres. This half of it is 160. We got this 160 done. We got a three acre field just right up the road here. And then just right down the road from that, we got 80 acres left and then we will be done, done, done with harvest. And then we can sleep for like six hours and then we got to clean up a bunch of stuff. And then we have a lot of stuff to do for springtime. <laughs>